Today's video is slightly different from normal. I'm going to be discussing some of the ways in which I think playing chess and pursuing self-improvement are incredibly complementary to each other and why if you are on a journey of self-improvement such as myself then I'd really encourage you to start playing chess if you haven't already or if you are already playing chess to work on improving your ability. You can listen to this video as a podcast if you prefer as there's no important visuals going on but I will have some bullet games that I played against a subscriber I met in my chess discord server playing in the background of the video if you'd like to watch those while you listen. But with that being said, I hope you enjoy the video and find it useful. So firstly, and possibly the most important reason, is that chess forces you to control your emotions because your feelings are irrelevant when the only thing that matters is making the best move on the board every move. This ties into the common self-improvement ideas of stoicism and discipline, meaning that chess is really useful as a method to train your mind to remain objective when assessing any given situation, whether that be on the chessboard or in real life. I found this really useful in my life in general, especially with kickboxing, which I've been doing for the past couple of years. And when you're in a fight, if you get hit, and you know your head starts spinning a little bit you get really annoyed you want to go absolutely slam the other guy in sparring or something you got to take a second to be like yo just chill out like you've still got to do the correct things it doesn't matter that you've just been hit maybe you should have avoided it but you've still got to make the best moves on the board and you've still got to fight him in the correct way and that's a really important thing in chess, especially in over the board games where you're sitting across from your opponent and they play a move and you look at the board and you, you, you didn't even consider the move and maybe it is completely winning for them and you've blundered horribly and maybe there's a way out of it. You don't know unless you calm down because that shock of seeing a move that you haven't considered it's really, really difficult to get over because your emotions are rising, you're, you're panicking or you're feeling angry that you didn't see it or you're feeling sad that you're gonna, you, you think you're going to lose the game. You feel those emotions and you've got to put them to the side and really think, okay, maybe I should have seen that move, but that doesn't matter anymore. All that matters is trying to find the best move in this position. And once you calm your mind down and start to assess things objectively, then you can, you know, you can play the best moves. And that's useful in any aspect of life, like the example I gave of kickboxing. So that's reason number one. Reason number two, and one of my favorite reasons for playing chess as a method of enjoyment, is the fact that chess is a game that involves no aspect of luck or reliance on outside factors that many other games and sports include. There's no probability metrics when you or your opponent can be rewarded for being lucky. There's no aspect of luck. Like in football, if the ball bounces in a weird way or it comes off the post in a strange manner and you just happen to be in the right position, there's no such thing in chess. There's no aspect of luck. You move the piece where you want to move the piece. And all the parameters are preset and unmoving. You know what time control there is. You know that if you touch a piece, you have to move the piece. And you can't argue about that. You just have to accept it. And in the same way, if you win a game, there's no question of, oh, he was just lucky. No, you were just better. You were just a better player. And I really like that aspect of the game. Because it's an individual sport as well, there's no reliance on teammates to assist you, which is the case in basically any team sport. So in chess, you are completely reliant on yourself. And so if you lose, it's completely and utterly your fault. And if you win, it's completely and utterly by your own doing or by your opponent playing badly, which is only two things to consider. There's not 22 players on a pitch, like in football. I bring football up because I really like football, <laughs> but that's separate. And in football, if you have a great game, you can still lose. 
But in chess, if you have a great game, unless your opponent plays better than you, you're going to win, most likely. And so when you do lose, you can only blame yourself. And it's a fantastic way to learn self-accountability, which is useful in every single aspect of life, to learn from your failures rather than blaming external factors. And finally on this point, chess is completely objective. There's no referee making a subjective call, which could go either way, like a 50-50 tackle or something. And this subjective call could give your team an advantage or a disadvantage and affect the outcome of the game in a way that's completely out of your control. In chess, that's not the case. You simply make your move every single turn. You choose exactly what you want to do. And then you have to deal with the consequences that you've inflicted upon yourself or the benefits that you've got because you've made a fantastic move. And so it's completely self-accountable in both, in both a positive and a negative way, which is a part of the game that I absolutely love. Factor number three is the fact that many self-improvement influencers are constantly preaching that you can't play video games if you want to improve yourself. And to an extent, I do agree with this because it does train your mind to be rewarded with small stimuli of dopamine and try to crave that and seek that. Chess doesn't work in quite the same way. There's many instances in chess games where if you try to go for an instant hit of dopamine by giving a check or attacking an opponent's piece just for the sake of it, it often backfires and isn't actually that good of a move. So it trains your mind to be far more patient and analytical. So therefore I think chess in that way and other ways is an exception to this rule that video games are bad if you're trying to improve yourself. It's not only an enjoyable game to play in person or online, but it gives your mind positive reinforcement by rewarding your mind for being patient, rewarding your mind for being analytical, and rewarding your mind for making pragmatic decisions and not giving in to your emotions when playing a game of chess. You're rewarded for playing the best moves in the position, and you can only come to those best moves by thinking logically and analytically which is, of course, a great thing to have if you're trying to improve yourself. It goes away from the ideas of video games simply being highly stimulating and negatively reinforcing. Chess is an exception to that rule, in my opinion. The fourth reason is community. Chess can connect you with many other intelligent and like-minded people through many different avenues through YouTube channels such as my own, through local chess clubs, which I highly recommend you try and join one if you haven't already, or through online chess communities such as my Discord server, which is linked below, where we play games against each other, discuss opening theory, and just generally bring chess players together who are serious about improving their game or simply enjoying themselves. And I think the, the reasons that I mentioned previously Chess players are often quite intelligent people and have a lot of things that you can learn from because their minds work in quite an analytical and logical way. In my own personal experience in real life chess clubs, I speak to loads of the older guys there who've been playing chess in the same league because it works in like a league format for like 40 or 50 years and they've got so many good stories to tell and so many nuggets of wisdom that I wouldn't have gotten because I wouldn't have spoken to them unless I was playing chess with them. And so I think it kind of connects you with interesting and accomplished people in your local communities, which is definitely a big benefit of playing chess from a social aspect. Finally, to improve at the game of chess, you often have to study opening theory, end game techniques, or middle game strategies that are often difficult to comprehend and require immense levels of memorization in some cases, such as opening theory, where you might have to memorize 10, 15 moves in one branch of one line of one opening. And 
whilst that might be quite tedious, work in general and education and studying is often tedious and it's training your brain to not be averse to those methods of learning. These forms of studying chess are very similar to how you might get taught in school or how you might study business strategies uh, or, or, or how you might learn different ways of maximizing gains in the gym, for example. These are all essential ways in which you need to learn information that helps you to improve your life in many different ways. And chess is a perfect mode of transport to learn how to study and how to memorize and how to learn, which are common parts of any self-improvement journey. To conclude, there are certainly other ways in which I think chess is an incredible game to learn if you're also on a self-improvement journey, or if you simply just want a game to enjoy without the guilt of the highly stimulating dopamine-filled video games that are everywhere. And I'd be more than happy to cover other ways in which chess is useful for self-improvement in a future video if you'd be interested. So please let me know by dropping a comment and like down below so I can see if my audience actually resonates with this form of video, since I know it's a bit different, but I can certainly relate my improvements in chess over the past few years with my journey of working out and going to the gym and working on business, which is something I'd love to talk about in the future so that you guys can replicate similar things. If this video has inspired you to take up the game of chess or to improve at chess, then please check out any of the many videos of, on my channel where I play and analyze chess games to help you improve your thought process and in turn increase your chess rating. Thank you very much for watching.